After taking a short break from the internet last month for a few days, Garmin looked to have everything back on track, back online, and they're now rolling out new firmware updates for the Garmin Edge cycling GPS units. The older model units, the Edge 520, 520 Plus, 820 and 1000, all received a very minor update last week, listing various device stability improvements. But this week, it's a whole swag of updates for the new X30 range. Now that includes the 530, the 830, the 1030, and the 1030 Plus. They have a huge swag of updates and fixes that should make for a better user experience when using these devices. If you know the channel, you know I'm always keeping a close eye on updates for these because they're always in use in the Llama Lab to record multiple power sources. Okay, so onto the summary stack of what's new today. In short, here we go. There's updates to segments, Climb Pro, iPhone pairing, sensor connectivity, workout controls, light connection stability, and a whole lot more. Jumping over to the full list, which is identical for the 530, 830, and 1030, we have listed here segments. An issue with detecting segments that were going in the opposite direction of travel. Number one, right there, I've encountered that. If you've ever ridden around in Ballarat, White Swan, I've got the little segment listed going up there so I can check on my PB. Yeah, I was riding down the other way the other day and it detected as I turned off. So that one's now fixed. Improve segment and climb pro UI cooperation. Okay, fix issues with approaching segment embedded into course and other minor segment UI issues. Okay, and the last one there to segments is they fixed an issue where virtual partners would claim to be finished almost immediately after starting the segment. Not an idea for a longer segment if you're racing against someone who finishes within a few seconds. Next up on the list here is climb pro improved estimated time to end of climb pro climb or what I call time to party for the descent uh, or how much suffering to go. So the estimation of that's a little more accurate. Fix Climb Pro page graph drawing and fix an issue where the pop-up on climb approach would disable Climb Pro completely. Hmm, not optimal. Next up is improved iPhone pairing. Now I think this is always going to be a moving target because iOS 13 just updated the other day. iOS 14 isn't too far out. Phones change all the time so hopefully they're ahead of the curve there and using iOS 14 betas to make that more stable, I hope. Anyway, uh, this week with these updates that I've been running, it has been absolutely flawless. Once I've finished a ride, all three that I've been recording with updates straight away. So the iPhone pairing has been good in my experience, fingers crossed. Improved sensor connectivity, obviously that's a good one, but pretty broad statement, but again, power meters, heart rate monitors, cadence sensors, anything else you connect, improved connectivity. Fingers crossed that fixes a few things for people. Improved automatic FTP detection. If you're using the automatic FTP suggestion on here, that's good. Added go back, pause, and go forward workout step controls to the workout tray. Now Jimbo147 over on the Trainer Road forums has shown a screenshot of this in action. Seems pretty happy with it. So if you're using workouts synced from Trainer Road or anywhere else, you've now got a little bit more control over that workout out on the road or on the bike indoors. Next up here, they've added an option to delete a data field in quick edit mode. You can access that by pressing and holding the data field on a timer page. Very similar to pressing and holding a data field and changing the type of data field shown. You can press and hold and there's an option there to remove the data field. Do note, if you have something like four data fields on the screen and you delete one, you'll only have three. And adding that fourth back, the fourth data field, you'll need to go back through the menus and add that. So use that sparingly. Remember, you can chop, but you can't add data fields from that new shortcut they've added there. I think they need to add data fields as another shortcut in there. Maybe the next update, we'll see that. Improved grit and flow consistency between Garmin products. If you go full send on a mountain bike or a gravel bike, um, that will be more consistent, great. Garmin have improved the bike light connection stability in this firmware update. So if you're running something like the radar here, which also has the Ant Plus LGT, the light, that's gonna be a little bit more stable. Um, I use the bike light battery indicator to give me an indication of how much battery the radar has left. Sometimes the light doesn't pair, but the radar does, so it has a question mark where the battery is. Hopefully that's now all sorted. Next on the list here is the bike alarm not turning off after the correct password was entered. That's gonna be a little awkward at the coffee shop if you grab the bike, enter your correct password and it still beeps. Yeah, try and explain that one to your friends that it is your bike that you're riding off with. Uh, next up, fixed radar vehicle drawing, temporarily not updating. So once you have the radar paired with one of these devices, the little cars will draw up the side. Uh, there was a few jumping things happening with previous firmware. We'll test that out, out on the road. Added a shortcut to the display menu by pressing and holding the auto brightness button on the status widget. Okay, we'll give that a shot. Again, more shortcuts. Uh, added a toggle for the mountain bike map theme. Another one for the mountain bikers, improved mountain bike trail and UI. Fixed an issue where the history line wasn't updated while panning in the map. Fixed an issue with the number of power zones not displayed correctly in the ride. One for the power meter people and fix a dual sided power meter calibration factor reporting only one side. If you have a dual sided power meter and you hit calibrate, which is an auto zero, 
Sometimes it'll come back with only one figure. If you have a dual sided meter, it has to send that auto zero to both sides and it's nice to get that indication back from both sides. If you have a stages, it'll come back with two figures and it'll interchange between the two. Same with the vector threes, I'm guessing that's fixed it for a few other dual sided power meters. Fixed first beat metrics for multiple rides during the same power cycle. Okay, training effect UI layout. Removed unnecessary beeps for notifications that don't need them. Excellent, I really hope they've fixed the one where you plug your Garmin into USB charge, it beeps, and then you unplug it, it beeps again. So we'll see what beeps are no longer there. Fixed time zone map downloads from Wi-Fi. Fixed an issue with power targets and TCX workouts and made various device stability improvements. We like to see that. So that covers the Edge 530, 830, 1030. Now the 1030 Plus had a slightly different change log. I think a lot of these are probably already rolled out recently to this newer unit. But a few of the same ones there are uh, updated the RTL pairing, so the rear tail light here, to always require the tail light to be paired as a light as well. So that's gonna fix that one. Requires the RTL to be in pairing mode while pairing for the first time. Pairing mode for these things, press and hold for a few seconds and that light over there will change. You can now pair that as a light as well as the radar. Added support for new GPS firmware in the 1030 Plus. Sync your device to update the firmware is the text they're saying there. Now sync your device to update the firmware. Now obviously the device does sync if it's updating the firmware anyway. There may be a cryptic indication to grab a USB cable, plug it in. Because I found in the past only some of those updates came over Garmin Express with the USB cable. Especially when it comes to the maps too. The maps only update over the cable. Fixed issues with course recalculations. Added more options for course navigation recalculation. Uh, the mountain bike theme, live track updates, base camp, and made various device stability improvements. Well, there we go, happy days. Garmin do do a phased rollout for these firmware updates. Yesterday it was sitting on 20% rollout, so it was a bit of a lottery whether you got that firmware automatically or not. But today, I've just checked again and it's sitting at 100%. So grab your device, do a firmware update, hold your own update party before your next ride. If those updates aren't coming down, again, grab yourself a cable, plug it into Garmin Express, do a force sync, and on the next boot, you should have an option here to install the new update and go for a ride. I'll put a link in the video description to the Garmin forums. It's somewhere that I keep an eye on all the time to see how people are going with these new updates. And it's always a good source for tips and tricks for these units. So there we are for today. Remember to hit subscribe to be alerted of new videos on this channel. And thanks for watching.